Man, Parasite Eve is such a fantastic game, it almost makes me mad that it ends. Like, I want to keep playing this game indefinitely, because it is just so smooth and tight. It goes down so nice. Parasite Eve has a weird genre. It's a survival horror RPG. But believe me, it works perfectly. It's like Resident Evil meets a cup of awesomeness. Its survival horror moniker doesn't quite fit because there's one thing it's missing that's prevalent in really good hardcore survivor horror games, and that is constantly running out of bullets. While you do need to keep track of how many bullets you have, in this game you have melee weapons, which you can use a lot, but then there's also different guns, which do need bullets. But the thing is, you're not in the constant need of bullets all throughout the game. If you're a smart person, you can manage your bullets effectively, and you will more or less always have enough ammunition. See, Parasite Eve has just a fantastic, awesome world, and it knows it, so it encourages exploration. Oh, a door is closed, so you have to run all around until you find the key for that particular door. But as you run around, not only do you find a bunch of enemies, but also you find a bunch of different items and consumables, such as the aforementioned ammo, various weapons, various equipment, various consumables you can use to heal yourself, or whatever. Exploring the game gives you enough provisions to pass it. The game is set in this fantastic world. It's different from most other RPGs in the fact that it takes place in our world, in Manhattan of all places. And it takes place around 1997, so it's Manhattan in modern times. You're obviously not gonna have beautiful floating castles in the sky like a fantasy RPG, but the game is drawn so well that you absolutely admire looking at all the modern buildings, all the gorgeous surroundings, and even the dirty surroundings that are meant to be damp and dark and ugly, they're all drawn very well. So the world of this game is just an absolute treat to run around in. There are just tiny little additions that take this game from being great to just being awesome. Like the echoes of your footsteps in your high heels as you walk around a hard wood floor in an eerie area where something bad just happened. Little things like that give this game's creepy, foreboding atmosphere a really classy adult feel, and I really appreciate it. It shows effort on the developer's part. And on top of all this, this game uses my favorite graphical system of all time. It's a 3D character running around a pre-rendered painting, if you will. It's just gorgeous. It's like Legend of Dragoon, Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy VII. It's the best art style in RPG. Hell, the best art style a game can have, period. The game's story is a bit weird, and saying it's a bit weird is really an understatement. I mean, the amazing atheist being signed to be a spokesman for Folger's Coffee would be a bit weird. This game is totally out there in the fifth dimension weird. You're this NYPD cop, BTW, represent. But on top of that, you're this hot chick, and you're going to the opera with this date, maybe your boyfriend, I don't know. And as the opera is going on, some actors at the opera just combust into flames. And then the people sitting in the audience just start combusting into flames. It just turns into chaos. And then the main woman singing, she kind of escapes, and you chase her down, and she turns out to be this weird mutated creature and then a bunch of other animals start mutating into these weird creatures that you have to fight. I don't want to ruin much more of the story but just keep in mind this game is crazy out there and it is creepy and really disturbing and it's not disturbing because of the monsters. I mean there are some horror games like this that are just creepy. Ooh naughty monsters. This game is like a creepy. There are like charred bodies of people with just their skin burned off and as you run into a room you just see them, you try to pick up some ammo as you run by them and then out of nowhere one of them moves and starts talking with their dying breath. It's so sick and disturbing but it's like adult sick and disturbing. It's not sick and disturbing because there's a mutated rat with five tails. Ooh, While that's pretty cool as well, there are a adult themes in this game. This is not a game for kids. I, I would not recommend you letting your kids play this. They will have nightmares. 
forget that. This game will give adults nightmares. I mean, charred, dying bodies. It's horrible. It's like being in war. So the story, fantastic. The graphics, awesome. Our main protagonist, totally cool part of the NYPD, the most badass police force on the planet. And on top of that, she is a fox. And on top of that, the survival horror parts in this game have some real adult horror. I mean, it does that well. I mean, this game has got it going on in almost every way, and everything just fits together so well. Everything is tight and smooth. The menus in this game are just so intuitive, and it's so easy to just go through the menus, to use a spell to heal yourself, to use a spell to uh, scan an enemy to see what the enemy's strengths and weaknesses are, to equip and unequip different weapons, to use different items. Everything is like Butter. I love the menu system in this game. The combat in this game, well, it's an active time, but you have this time meter where you can only attack after your time meter fills up. But there is an actual point to running around while you wait for your attack time to fill up. You see, while you're waiting for yourself to attack, it's your enemy's turn to attack. And running around is a way to dodge or evade enemy attacks. The bosses and enemies have their own little strategies. Like, there are these weird giant sewer frogs, and you can't stand next to them. Because they have this tongue attack that just hits you. So you have to be all the way on the other side of the screen when you fight them. Some bosses have these giant tails they slap you with. Some bosses and regular enemies shoot projectiles at you. And you have to kind of time yourself to avoid the projectiles or to run in a certain direction while a beam is being shot at you. There is a real strategy element to this RPG and I love that, especially because this is an RPG from the late 90s. And typically from that era, the strategy element in RPGs was picking the right commands, not actively running around and evading enemy attacks. Not only do you get better fighting the enemies by continually participating in fights with them, learning what different enemies are good and bad at, learning how different enemies move, how they will attack you, what part of the screen they typically stay on. That's not the only way you improve. You actually gain levels as you fight the enemies, which grows your character's various attributes. Parasite Eve is one of the most perfect, one of the most complex complete gaming experiences you can have and that's why it gets an official Stan Birdman rating of a 9.5 out of 10. I strongly, very strongly urge you to check this game out if you're a fan of survival horror games, if you're a fan of RPGs, and if you're a fan of retro games. But on top of that, even if you're not a fan of those particular genres, this game is just so tight and well made you will like it even if all you play is puzzle and sports games. Trust me on this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, my friends. <sighs>